once again and be able to speak to you today. And I'm hoping that the word that I will bring today will be um, transformative, that it will be helpful, it will be useful for you. So let's just start off, church, by praying. Father God, I just thank you right now, Lord God. I just thank you for the opportunity to stand here before your people, Lord. God, we thank you for the opportunity to just share your word, God. God, I ask right now, Lord, that you would just let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, because you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I think we all know that this month is Stewardship Month, and Pastor has been bringing some powerful messages showing us how we should honor the Lord through our giving. In his first message, which was the power of tithe, Pastor told us that tithing provides the platform to petition God, that closed doors would be opened and God would rebuke the devourer for our sake. In the spirit of giving, he reminded us that true love always results in the giving of our time and our talent. He wrapped up his trilogy by telling us to put God first. He told us we should put God first and all things will be added unto us because obedience opens the doors to blessing. I'm so very grateful that he entrusted me to close out this series about giving, something that we know that we at Renewal are very good at. You know, I looked up giving, and according to Webster, giving means to make a present, to grant or bestow or formal action, to accord or yield to another, to put into the possession of another for his or her use. And as we go through the day, you will see why that last one, to put in the possession of another for his or her use, is very important. Let's look at what the scripture says about giving. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it talks about what we should do for giving. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I was so glad to hear Deacon Stanley basically um, say the same thing during the offering time. Everything that we own and everything that we have, it comes from God. So when we give, we simply offer a small portion of the abundance that he has given to us. But with the sowing is a reaping, which brings me to our message today. The message for today is God's 401k, the power of giving. So let me tell you a story before we uh, get too deep into this so that you can understand why I chose the title God's 401k. Some of you may or may not know, but I actually uh, worked for the federal government for more than 20 years, and they had a 401k. They didn't call it a 401k. They called it a thrift savings plan. And if you're in a nonprofit, it's probably going to be called a 403b. There are lots of different names for it, and depending on where you work, that, op that option exists. And as one of the things as a federal employee, um, if you are a federal employee, it's something that you look forward to because you have this thrift saving plan. And I recall that there was a time when the HR, they scheduled a training, which was basically about the thrift savings plan. And it would tell you how much money you could end up having by the time you get ready to retire. So it went through all of the calculations. And I remember that there was a couple of people in there whose hearts sank. And their hearts sank because um, let me explain the, uh, the thrift saving plan. The, you can put into that plan, like any 401k, and then the government will match a certain amount. At one point it was 6%. I don't know what it is now because I've been away from the government. But it's your option to put something in other than the base. You can put as much as you want and they're going to match. Now it's up to you how much you put in. The government doesn't mandate that to you. And there were people whose hearts sank because they had not been putting in. So even though they got a match, they didn't get as much as they could have gotten had they put in more. Because there's, a, there's that power of multiplication that would have been at work. So they were crushed. And that's kind of the way it is with us. There are certain things that we need to put into the kingdom in order to reap the biggest benefit. So that's why I said 401k. And what is a 401k? Um, it's a retirement plan. It's a saving plan that's offered by your employer. It helps you save for retirement. 
Um, and as I said in, in my story, employers may choose to match some or all of that. So, but here's the thing, you have to sufficiently invest in it. And that's the same way it is with God's 401k. There's some advice that the Lord gave about that, that in Corinthians, there's some word that scripture gives as advice. If we look at Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, it says, remember this, who, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Our background scripture for today is Matthew 25, and we're going to start off by reading verses 13 through 18, which begins the very familiar story often called the parable of the talents. Um, for a little bit of background, Jesus had just already told the story about the virgins. You know, there were ten. There were five that were wise and five that were foolish. Who, the wolves, those that were foolish missed out on their opportunity. So he gave some advice about what to do by talking about, by sharing this story. So let's look at the scripture. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags. And to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went out at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off. He dug a hole in the ground and he hid his master's money. So let's stop right there. We're going to see how the story concludes. There were three men in this story and they all were provided investment opportunities by their employer. As I read this story, I couldn't help but see the modern day application for it. The man on the journey, he was an investor. Think Warren Buffett. You know, Warren Buffett, he's like one of the richest men. He invests in stocks, and he always has a very diverse portfolio. So consider this man, Warren Buffett. He also was very diverse. He gave these fellows different levels of, of money. So he, they invested at different levels with his servants. You might say he was trying his hand at multi-level marketing. So let's dig into a little bit deeper into how this 401k traditionally works. You can pick how you allocate your funds that are offered in the 401k. Usually you can go online or they provide you a book and then you have an opportunity to look and see what the, re to review what the return on your investment is. They typically call that an ROI, return on your investment. So you can make wise decisions. Well, God's 401k is just like that. There are funds that you can invest in. And I'm going to look at four funds you should have in your portfolio and the dividends that they will pay. We're going to look at four. The first one, and they, have, they all have ticker um, symbols, because if you don't know anything about stocks, they all come with ticker symbols. So the first one is the J3B. That's the John 316 bond. Then the second one is the TIF, the Tithing Index Fund. The third one is the MGS, the Matthew 25 Global Shares. And the fourth one is the G69MF. That's the Galatians 69 Mutual Fund. Let's look at these and how they will work for you in your portfolio. Let's talk about the J3B. That's the John 316 bond. In the investment world, bonds are always considered a sure thing. If you go on the internet, if you have a financial advisor, or you've attended any of RCC's financial series, you would have heard that bonds are a good investment. Why are they a good investment? Because they are backed by the government. And they can be used to generate tax revenue to pay off debt. John 316 is just that. It's the, it's we, that John 6, 316 bond is backed by the sacrificial blood of Jesus. Let's read what John 3.16 actually says. For God so loved the world, you all know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So through his death, Jesus revealed what was pure. He revealed, he revealed what unfathomable love looked like, but he did more than that. Through the cross, God paved the, proved the depths of his love for us. So as believers, we, this should be the anchor stock in your portfolio. And, and in the secular world, they'll always tell you, have an anchor stock. And that's a stock that you can always count on. A lot of some people, Apple is their anchor stock. Other people, it might be Walmart. Things that you know that you can rely on. But in this kingdom business, in our kingdom's business, our anchor stock needs to be the J3B. Because Jesus paid a debt that we did not owe. So just like the government bond, Jesus' blood has, has done that blood tax for us. He paid for our sins. That's confirmed in the word. It's confirmed in Romans 5.8. In Romans 5.8, once again, it's another one that you know very well. I'm just going to say it, but I know that you know it. We don't even have to put that one on the screen. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So J3B, you got to have it in your portfolio. It's your anchor stock. We have a big ROI when we invest in the J3B bond. It's big because Jesus told us what, that the end is near. He says in Matthew 6, 31, 33, he told us what some of the benefits are, what some of the, de de uh, what the benefits are, what the benefits are, what the di dividends are. I can't get the word dividends out for some reason this morning. But he told us that. He told us that in 6, 31, 33. He said, do not worry, saying, what shall you, we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When we give ourselves to the kingdom, we will reap long-term benefits. Would you agree that the J3B stock is the stock that we must have, that that has to be the anchor in our lives, that that has to be the anchor so that we can reap the dividends that our Lord will pay us for our giving? So we got, now we're anchored. We've got J3B. We're locked in there. We've got it. But in addition to that, now we need to invest in the TIF. That's the tithing index fund. Pastor preaches often about tithing, and during the uh, stewardship month, he gave us a lot of instruction. There's lots of scriptures that support, support that. Um, Malachi 3, we've talked about that before. You know, the word says that we're to bring the whole tithe in the storehouse so that there is food in the house. Food in the house. And why do we need food in the house? We need we need food in the house for nourishment. We need food in the house for those who also may be hungry outside of the house, that we can t reach out to them and then we can bring them in and show them the love of Christ. Proverbs 3, 9 says that there, we have a responsibility. The Lord blesses us. We've anchored up in, in um, J3B and the Lord has blessed us. And it says in Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Tithing should give you joy. I don't know, Deacon Stanley had to be looking at my notes up here. Because yes, tithing brings you joy. It's, it's thankfulness to God and God because of what he's provided for us. He, because he pays a dividend. He pays us a dividend that is so clear. Deuteronomy 8, 18 tells us again about that dividend. Remember the Lord your God, for he, it is he who gives you the ability to produce well, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Back in that day, and now as it is today. The TIF. Got one more in the portfolio. Things are looking good. Now, we need another one in that portfolio. We need the MGS. That's the Matthew 25 global share. These are global shares which we have the opportunity to give and invest at those around us. Let's see what the scripture says. This is Jesus talking right now. We're going to look at Matthew 25, 31 through 40. We're going to walk through that. It says, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory and the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. 
All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. He gave a long, the king gave a long litany of things that had happened. But here's what the, the righteous said because they got perplexed. They were confused. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did you, when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? They just couldn't understand why he was saying that. And then the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. That's a dividend. Did you get that? That's a dividend. At Renewal, we get this right. We are a giving and a mission-centric church. We do it locally and nationwide. We feed the homeless. We dig wells. We minister to the community. We support our ministries. And our most daring project that's currently underway is we build a, we're building a bathroom for the children in Ghana so they don't have to go to a hole in the ground to do their business. That's what that's about. That's what that MSG stock does. That's the power of giving, not only monetarily, but through our time and our talent. There's power when we put these global shares into our 401k. You might want to call it sweat equity. It means that it's ministry that's accompanied by helps. If, if we do this, if we have the anchor stock, and then we come around and we do as the master has said. We're going to hear that well done. We're going to hear that. So the next stock that we're going to need to put in our portfolio, the final stock, these are all the, the key ones. There may be others, but these are the keys, is the G69MF. This is the Galatians 69 Mutual Fund. Galatians 69 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Throughout Galatians, the Apostle Paul, he kept writing about doing good to others, especially those who were in the family of God. He laid out the principle of sowing and reaping because no farmer expects a harvest if you don't put seed in the ground. It's impossible. I kind of grew up in the country, so we used to raise well, watermelon and corn and all that stuff. But guess what? They did not magically appear. We had to till the ground. We had to put the fertilizer in, and then we had to drop the seeds in, and then we had to water them. And then we got a result. So it's very important that we, we sow in order to gain, get something. Anything that builds up, that furthers the mission, expands the kingdom, blesses the church and the world, that's doing good. We can get weary if we forget why we are doing it or if our motives behind it are false or just tradition. Paul has encouraged us on that point in Hebrews 13, 16. In Hebrews 13, 16, Paul talks about this because he knows that sometimes we can get weary. And he said, and do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. How many of you want God to be pleased with, you, with what you're doing? I know I do. I do. If it seems like the work is thankless, and sometimes it can be, um, wait for the proper time. At the very least, you will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. You have that to look forward to. That's a dividend that comes. We are called to bear fruit. And, and what is our theme for this um, year? What's our theme for this year? Be fruitful and multiply so we can be fruitful we are we have that in our minds it's, it's what we're, we're called to do the promise here is that there will be a time when any effort of doing good will produce a visible result that the sower will experience and this will have this can happen multiple times throughout our lives if we are faithful if we're consistent if we sow seeds don't give up don't give up don't give up on doing good let's 
Let's look at Acts 20, 24 to 34 to 35. You know, and let give you a little bit of background. Paul is actually talk, talking to the elders of Ephesus. They came by to see him. Um, and talk, Paul was talking about how God's word and his grace builds up and gives things and that wasn't currently what was going on. So he says, the apostle Paul said, you yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. And everything I did, I showed you, I showed you model. I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the word that the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So when we're, when we're putting into that 401k, we're giving in there and we're giving out. We're, getting, we're reaping a benefit. We're reaping a dividend. Just like the secular 401k is for retirement so that we can live a comfortable life. The God's 401k is for, reti for our, our kingdom life. It's for our kingdom living, for our time and glory with him. We're sowing seeds into the kingdom that are reaping benefits on earth and then also providing dividends for us in the end. So as I conclude, I want to go back to our story and see what happened when the master returned. Remember Warren Buffett? He left these guys with some stuff. Warren left them with some things, and then Warren said, okay, time to come back. So he gave it to three fellas. Remember, there were three fellas. They all got different things. They got different things, and now Warren's back. You know, where's my money? Well, he didn't exactly say that, but, you know, he, he wants to know what's going on. So let's read the story, Matthew 25, 19 through 28. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Brought the other five. Master, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. Multiplication. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Imagine Warren Buffett is now saying, come to the mansion with me. Come share in all of my happiness. So now we have this other guy. The man with the two bags of gold also came. Master, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Wow, another one's going to be able to sit down with Warren, sit at his table, eat all kinds of food, you know, get, get chauffeured everywhere. But now, remember, there's one more guy. He only got one. Remember, this is multi-level marketing. We got, we got five, we got two, and now here's the guy with the one. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, I know you're a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went out and I hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. So basically, he hid it in the ground. Do we do that sometimes? Do we hide our talent in the ground? Do we hide our devotion to God in the ground? Do we hide our ability to, to tell somebody about Jesus? Do we hide that in the ground because we're afraid? Do we do that? Do I do that? Th that's food for thought. Here's what belongs to you. This is what you gave me. This is all you're getting back. I don't have anything else for you. This is what you gave me. Uh, I, and what did the master say? What did Warren say after all of this? His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and I gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put the, my money in deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. This guy, he did not get it. But here's the thing. What he does not understand, and, I, and I, I picked this up as I was reading this. He said, you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and I gathered where I have not scattered seed. That's an investor. That's an investor. They put certain money on things, and they reap the benefits from what Apple is doing. They reap the benefits from what Microsoft is doing. They're not creating an iPhone. They're not creating an app. But they are harvesting what was out there. They're gathering that seed that was out there. But this guy, he didn't get it. So now he says, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. 
What about that? Multiplication. The guy with five multiplied it, and then because of his faithfulness, he got what the lazy guy didn't want to do. Because I, I believe there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, you know, a lazy man actually ends up making work for himself because he tries not to do anything. So for whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to go in that place. I don't want to be thrown out. I don't want to be found unfaithful in not doing and sowing and reaping for the kingdom. Wow. I mean, just wow. Do we see ourselves in any of this? Hopefully not. But if we do, we can make a change. It's food for thought. If we are wise and we build our portfolio under God's 401k, it's going to be a great investment. That's, that's what a 401k is. It's, it's that power of giving. Our heavenly investment will return changed lives, restored families, break chains. Souls will enter the kingdom of God. Kingdom giving and investment is not always about money. It can be our gift of time and talents. Whatever we invest, we can rest assured that our giving and investment to the kingdom of God will pay out through all eternity. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want these things in my portfolio. I want the J3P. I want to anchor my life with the John 316 fund. And then I want to make sure that I follow his principles by having the TIF, the tithing index fund, in my portfolio. And then I want to make sure that I am, t am doing for others, I'm taking care of others by having the MGS, the Matthew 25 global shares. I want to have that in my portfolio. Then there's the G69F, the Galatians 69 mutual fund. I don't ever want to get wary of doing good and if I do get wary I'm just going to pray that the Lord will give me more strength because he will because that's who he is that's who he is so how do we know that all of these things we would benefit how do we know that they all return a dividend because the scripture tells us so and I have several scriptures as I conclude that I'm going to walk through and we you should be able and I should be able to see some of these things that are in our portfolio residing in these scriptures Proverbs 31 16 she considers a field and buys it from her earnings she plants a vineyard we know who this person is, right? Proverbs 31. We know who this one. This is that virtuous woman. She invested in a field. She invested in a field. And then she bought it. And then she got the earnings, the dividends from it. She planted a vineyard. She planted it. Remember, so there we have an investor. This woman was virtuous in a lot of ways, but she was also smart. She, was, she invested. Then we have Proverbs 19.17. One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. That sure sounds like the MGS, the Matthew 25 Global Shares. It could also be in the G69F, the Galatians 6 9, because we're not wary of doing good. This says that if we lend to the poor, if we invest in the poor, God, he will repay him. He'll repay us for our good deed. So that's why we shouldn't ever get weary of well-doing. That's why we should always invest. That's why we need the MGS in our 401k portfolio. And then when we look at Proverbs 13, 11, Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. That's what a 401k does. Now, you remember that guy who had the one coin? He hit it in the ground, you know, he didn't know what he wanted to do. And so he didn't gather anything little by little. The folks, in the, 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 the guy with the two, the guy with the five, they had a plan. Because we don't know if they got all five at once, or we don't know if they got the additional two at once, but we know that they started to accumulate. That's what a 401k does for you. Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So back to our story. This guy was hasty. He's so afraid of Warren Buffett that he decides he's going to hide everything in the ground. So he got nothing. But the guy with the five, the guy with the two, they were diligent because they knew, and I inferred that they knew 
his, his, uh, the way that he dealt with business. So they tried to model that same thing by accumulating more. So diligence leads to profit. And I would say diligence leads to investments, leads to dividends in the kingdom of God. Proverbs 3, 9, 10. We've talked about this before, but we need to be reminded. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. And you, how do you do that? With the TIF, the tithing index fund. If you keep that in your portfolio, you're going to be honoring God with your wealth. Because as I said before, nothing that we have, we didn't get it on our own. We did not give it on our own. Everything. I know there's a song that we used to sing when I was growing up. You can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try, the more he gives, the more you give, the more he gives to you. So just keep on giving. Just keep on giving and see what God can do. Luke 6, 38 through 38. Here, this, is, this is it right here. This is it just kind of tells you everything. Put these things in your portfolio. But think about this. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure that you give, it will be measured to you. So that means every aspect of profits has the ability to come to you if you give. So I leave you with these questions. How is your 401k with God? What's in your portfolio? Is your portfolio healthy or is it in need of a revival? Do you have the anchor stock, the J3B? Because you've got to have that one. If you don't have that one, you have to go back to the drawing board because that is what puts it all together. Um, are you holding on like the guy with the one talent to contributions that actually belong to him? Are you building a fund that will pay off in the long run, that will bring you dividends for the kingdom? Think about it. Think about it. What's in your portfolio? What's in your portfolio today? Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this time that we've had together, Lord. God, we thank you that you are a God who, who, who gives us a dividend. You're a God, Lord, that rewards those of us who diligently seek you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that we pray right now, Lord God, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us if we have been like the man with the one talent. Forgive us if we've hidden our gifts, Lord. We don't want to hide anything from you, Lord God. We want to be fruitful. We want to multiply, God. God, I pray right now that this message, Lord, that this message will just sink into our hearts, Lord God. We'll carry it with us, Lord, and we will continue to build a portfolio that will weep a reward for your kingdom, that will do good to mankind, that will bring a harvest of souls to the kingdom and bring nothing but glory to you. And all this we ask in Jesus' name, amen.